Somewhere by a gated star Baby, they ain't never gonna find me I'm a renegade I have to be completely honest with you. There are days where I just want to quit, where it seems like nothing is going right, things aren't where you want them to be, you don't feel like getting up, you don't feel like pushing yourself, you don't feel like doing all the different things that are on your to-do list to do, you just want to quit and I ask myself, should I quit, should I keep going, I don't know. Whether it be here on the farm or whether it be video and providing you with YouTube videos or whether it be just being a dad and being a parent. You're like, I can't take this anymore. I, I just want to quit. I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm so tired. <sighs> so what do you do about that? Do you have thoughts like that? Do you experience times in your life where you want to quit, whether it be in your relationships or in your job or with your, your health and your fitness? You just say, I'm done. I don't care. I'm just going to do whatever. Are you having those thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. Because I must admit, there's times that I have them. So this morning I'm working on some new beds in this new area that I'm trying to prep so that way we can actually grow more stuff in our market garden here. So I'm expanding it and at the same time I'm sharing it with you. Uh, as I do with a number of projects here on our farm from time to time. Uh, no, I don't think most people realize how difficult it can be videoing yourself as you're doing different projects. So, as you're trying to think through what needs to be done in the project, you're also trying to work and set up the camera and get different angles to make it interesting for your view, the viewers. And uh, it can be quite the challenge of, of doing these things. And I think most people watching these videos don't really realize that. And uh, one of the things that really bothers me is when people, when YouTubers offer a product to sell, and then you see in the comment section below, people get aggravated and upset by uh, the YouTuber trying to make additional money. There's a lot of work that goes into making these videos. Not just from the recording standpoint, but also from the editing and actually just coming up with a project that you want to share with your audience. So, uh, of course, I believe YouTubers should be compensated. And there's not a lot of money. Shh, I don't think you know that secret. There's not a lot of money out there for just making money on YouTube, especially when you're just getting started. So, if you, if there's channels that you like and you, and you believe in what they're doing, please support them. Donate to them, support them in whatever way, whether they're, off, they're offering some type of merch, support them. Uh, because it can be hard. Like I said, there's times that I want to quit. There's times that I, I don't want to get that camera out and share with you all what I'm doing just because it, it, could, be, it could be a challenge. However, uh, there's a number of things that, that I keep in mind about when the times come that I do want to quit, that, that, that really helps inspire me to keep going. I, I really enjoy making these videos and sharing them with you all and giving you an opportunity to, to see what we're doing on the farm as well as share with you some of my life experiences and knowledge at the same time. Man. Woo! 
So you may be wondering what I'm doing right here. Well, I am, since our property is on a slope, I do earth and raised beds. And those are really good because being on a slope, when rain comes, water comes, without the bed being raised, it would just wash away your seeds, wash out, kill your plants. So I'm continuing that process of what we're doing on our farm of having a bunch of earth and raised beds. And right now I'm just trenching it out just a little bit more for the walkway and having this area right here be more raised up. A few years ago, there was a gentleman by the name of Chris Lee who led the Florida Gators to a national championship. But a couple years prior to that, he led a high school team to a couple of state championships. You know what? I had the honor of playing with Chris Lee the year before he won the championship. But you know what? I didn't stay on the team. I quit. So I was never able to experience what it was like to win a championship. I am thankful my parents actually let me do it. I know parents usually don't let their kids quit things. But you know what? Me going through that experience and making that decision for myself it built something inside of me that later on in life I said, you know what, I am not going to quit again. I don't want to miss out on success because I can't stick to it. So th those are some of the things that I keep in mind and why I stick to what I decide to do. Oh man, Whew. catch my breath. And that's just like with life too, and anything that you're trying to go after, there's times where you just need to stop and catch your breath. Don't quit, but just take a break and regather yourself. And uh, there's three things that I have learned in life in pursuing the things that you want to pursue and making sure that you don't quit. And one is to first go after something that you're, you're really passionate about, something that you really want to do. And then the second, in relation to that is examine and count the costs. Examine yourself if you are really, really passionate about it and examine yourself to see if you have the skills and whatever is involved to, to achieve that goal. And if you don't, acquire them. And uh, make sure, examine and count the costs to make sure that it's something worthwhile, that, that it's really, uh, really something that is something you should be pursuing and going after. And then third is just stick to it and persevere. If you've, you've made sure that you're passionate about it and you've counted the costs and uh, the trials and challenges come just you're just gonna have to hang in there and push through it and uh, those are those are things that I've learned the rewards will come the blessings will come but the times of challenges will come too so uh, those are things that I keep in mind and uh, throughout all of our YouTubing there's been a number of blessings that have reinvigorated me and inspired me and a lot of it comes from viewers like you who are leaving nice, kind comments. And, and those of you who have come up and, and have had the opportunity to meet us at, at various conferences and expos, that has been so encouraging. And I really appreciate that. And thank you all for viewing our channel and connecting with us. And recently we've had an opportunity to connect with uh, some viewers in person. And it has been so it's inspiring. And uh, Dolan and Kinsey, if you remember them for them, uh, a couple videos ago, make sure you check out that video if you haven't already. They came and visited our farm and actually Dolan was, and, and Kenzie was really got to work. They didn't just come here to hang out, they came here to work and help out on the farm too. And we really appreciated that. And then just not too long ago, we had some more visitors on our farm. That Both of these families, the Dolan and Kenzie and this family came, traveled so many miles just to come see us. And that was so exciting. You got some friends with you here this time, right, Sayla? Yep. yep. And who are you guys? Sophie and Chloe. Welcome. And these guys have come to see us from all the way in, from Ohio. That's amazing. We're so happy that you came to visit us on our farm. And you have a farm too, right? Mm-hmm. And what all do you grow on your farm? We grow tomatoes, we grow peppers, we grow flowers, we grow squash. And we grow cucumbers. Whoa, that is great. 
You have any animals on your farm? Yeah. Two rabbits, one dog, and three five, cat. seven, five cats. Whoa, that's pretty good. But you didn't come down here by yourself. You came with your parents, right? Yeah. All righty. Hi guys, I'm Megan. And I'm Josh. We're from Horner Family Farms in Ohio, and we just came to see our friends. And Megan actually works for Bootstrap Farmer. And for those of you who follow our channel on a normal basis, you know how much of a fan I am of Bootstrap Farmer. They have excellent products. And Megan actually began working for Bootstrap Farmer. Well, actually, let me have her tell you the story. We actually um, started using Bootstrap Farmer's products from following Mike on his um, YouTube channel. We got a lot of great information, and then I seen that Bootstrap Farmer needed someone, so I applied, and here I am, and I enjoy every minute of it. And that is so great. That just shows you how much of a good product that Bootstrap Farmer offers that she was willing to actually go work for them as well because she was just impressed by the products. So that is great. And we want to thank you guys for coming to visit us, and it's so neat. To be able to have people come and check us out on our farm. We really appreciate you visiting us. Can you put your arms like this and lean on them? Oh wow, that's not sure if I can do this, but I think I can. Let's have to see. The one on each arm. She's putting me to the test here. Hopefully I'm strong enough. So you're gonna hold on to what part? You can hold on right here. This, like that, and you're gonna try not to okay. okay. So let's try it. Try not to fall. Alright, try not to fall. I'll try not to fall too. <laughs> Grab them, let's go. Okay. Like yeah. that. One, two, three, go. Put your arms though. There we go. You got it. Yay, I'm hanging. You got to hold. I can't. Pick those feet up. Pick your feet up. <laughs> oh, you fell down. Come on, you got to do it. Come on, just let go. Just let go. Pick those knees up. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. There you go. You're doing it. You're doing it. You did it. So why did you guys right, decide to start farming that. to begin with? Well, uh, our youngest daughter, uh, was diagnosed with NF1. Uh, they found a tumor in her brain, which was uh, non-malignant, but it was pushing on her optic nerve. So she went through a whole year of chemo, uh, 12 months, one dose a month. <clears throat> and uh, taking care of her, we neglected ourselves a little bit and we started noticing that we felt bad once she started feeling better. So we decided to start eating better. And we were more conscious of the things that we were taking into our body. Uh, and that was basically it. We uh, tried to sell some plants and some fruits and vegetables on the side to help with the money issues that we were having with uh, taking her to, because we live in Ohio and uh, we live about three hours away from the children's hospital that she had to go to every month, sometimes three and four times a month. Uh, and we had help, but just on the side, we were selling like vegetable starts and some vegetables at a market and caught the bug. We were super excited after that. I think my first sale was like, you know, cha-ching, you know, to take something from a seed, plant it in the ground and nurture it and take care of it and then take it to a consumer and watch them enjoy it. Uh, it's a life-changing experience. Every and go. Has a reason. You got it. Baby, you got it. Come it. Come it. Oh, oh, watch out, Micah. Bye, everybody. Go. Lie down. Oh. Let me try. So that's so neat that one of the driving forces of you guys starting getting into farming was just like us. It was all about health to begin with. 
and then as you got into the lifestyle and then you started doing it you started to really see that hey this is a neat lifestyle to live and what would you say are some of the benefits and things that you guys have learned about the lifestyle from farming as you're doing it now you kind of touched on it a little bit but can you explain a little bit more so some of the by uh byproducts side benefits to live in a lifestyle that we're uh, always trying to achieve to be in is that uh, it brings our family closer together we're out there not only in the fields and planting and uh, preparing produce uh, the kids go with us to sell so they're interacting with people uh, and our littlest one she's a salesman she'll try to upsell everybody that comes through uh, so it gets them out of the house gets them off the electronics uh, keeps us out of the house keeps us off the electronics most of the time uh, I get to spend a lot of time now with my wife that would have been wasted uh, just sitting on the couch uh, her in her corner me in my corner uh, and she is literally my best friend and that's one of the best things about the way we're trying to live now uh, and I love to see the kids get out in the dirt uh, and play around uh, even though they're supposed to be on task sometimes you just gotta let them go and play uh, and the community that I was raised in, the way I was raised was that we stayed to ourselves and everybody in the town kind of did their own thing. And uh, I believe that that was the way it should be for a while. I believe that I was raised to believe that the people around where we live were against us all the time. But then when our daughter got sick and I seen the whole community come together, to help us and to help her especially because when something happens to your kids that's what it's about so they came together and then we started thinking well <clears throat> now this is our way to give back uh, we gave some demonstrations on raised beds in the community uh, we helped start a farmers market in the town that we live in uh, we went to some food safety program training to help other growers in the area learn or uh, identify areas of risk in their own operations and uh, let's see we got asked to do a project with a local church to start a communal garden in the, in the town so we had to come up with a proposal for that and uh, actually received a grant uh, to help get that started and it is uh, underway now and that is one of the the best parts is being in that community now that I was brought up to believe uh, we should be opposed to for some reason I don't really know what that reason was but I've learned to branch out it's helped me socially because I'm an introvert and just want to stay home and avoid everything but once you get me out and out of my shell I open up and it has helped with that tremendously so that's really interesting how a challenging situation with your daughter's health brought you to the point because you probably wouldn't have gotten into farming without going through that challenge but it brought you to farming and the lifestyle that is within farming and then you began to see that there are so many benefits of through farming and that lifestyle of being con more connected to the earth, more connected to where your food comes from, more connected to one another as a family, and more connected to the community around you. That uh, I personally feel that, that that is the kind of lifestyle that we are actually meant to live. This not just going to a, a job and, and just providing for our needs, but also, also living a life of purpose and a life that is connected together. So I want to congratulate you guys for for making that step and deciding to do these things it is really admirable and what would be some what would suggestions would you have for others who are considering going into farming or changing a lifestyle where they could live a life uh, more connected like this advice for people that were thinking about starting this kind of lifestyle or trying to dip their toes into it my advice would be if you're already thinking about doing it you must be interested so please if you want to do it, do not wait for something big or tragic to happen in your life to force you to have to do it. 
uh, you can do your research. Start small, uh, there's always room to grow. Uh, I think Mike likes to say, don't get analysis paralysis, where you overthink things and try to do it, because there was no learning like doing. So that would be my number one advice. But definitely do a little bit of research and try to figure out what kind of system you want to start in. And there's nothing that says you can't change system once you start. It's all about each individual person's setup is different than everybody else's. Uh, we do things a little bit different than Mike. We do things different than Curtis does. Definitely different than JM or uh, Connor at Never Sink. And uh, Richard Perkins is another guy. Uh, he's in the Netherlands, I believe. Uh, so just go out there, uh, start small, and grow on. Here we go. Grow on. Just do it. Just do it. Hugs. Whoa. Oh, I get a hug too. You gonna give hugs? No hugs. Oh, she's giving you a hug. Did I get a hug this time? Oh. When do I stop that? And happy birthday. There you go. <laughs> Stop talking, Daddy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's taking you with her. <laughs> and boom. There's still a lot more work that I have to do in this bed right here to get it ready to be growing things in, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But it was so neat to hear Josh's story and the challenges that they faced, regretfully, but how it's inspired them to make the lifestyle changes that they're making and getting into farming and a better way of life for their family. So inspiring. And another blessing that we've received from being on YouTube is being invited to the different conferences and expos that we've been to, like the Homesteading Life Conference in Hannibal, Missouri. So uh, if you haven't bought your tickets for that, it's coming up soon, it's in August, so make sure you get your tickets because I plan to be there once again. And while we were there last year, we had the, an opportunity to meet another wonderful person named Dr. Flower and her husband, Jerry. And Dr. Flower is actually, we are offering her products as the brand of the month for our channel and she's giving all of our viewers 10% off all of her herbal tinctures and a number of just awesome products that she has so make sure you check out the show notes below and check out her website and get 10% off well that's it for this vlog I hope you are sticking to it I hope you don't quit I'm not gonna quit I know that this isn't gonna be the only time that I'm gonna face the desire to want to quit but I'm gonna have to push through it just like you are too so hang in there and grow on see you next time